Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we are going to look at in this video, and thanks to Ingenious for sending this over, uh, this is the ECS 5512F. This is a half, um, not a half rack, but like a half uh, wide, half 1U wide fiber switch. So if you remember the Netgear M4300 series that we, uh, we love around here, this is going to be a similar switch. So I'll leave a link uh, to the specs on this switch, the user manual, and all those things. But it does have 12 SFP Plus ports, Can be uh, has some local management, can be cloud managed. They do send, uh, spend, send special rack ears with it, but get a close-up of this real quick. So you've got a console port uh, over here. You've got your LEDs. You've got a reset. There's your 12 SFP Plus cages. You got rack mount, gear on the side, fan on the back, power connector. And you can put two of these side by side. In fact, I could probably mount that net gear with it because I'm assuming they use a similar, uh, a similar mounting device. But uh, they also sent some ingenious SFP uh, plus modules. These are actually single mode fiber, 10 gig, single mode. And... Uh, I'm going to use those later in a follow-up video. What I'm going to use to connect this to the network for now is, you've probably seen this before, this is the MicroTik um, SFP Plus is multi-mode. It's the S Plus RJ10, and I'll leave a link, an Amazon affiliate link to that. What else comes in the box? You get a power cable. You get a console cable. And then you get the rack ears. So I've got those laying right over there, but we're not going to rack mount it. We're just going to set it on the table so I could actually put these handy-dandy uh, little feet on it, but then I could still rack mount it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this plugged in. I'm going to get it fired up, and uh, we're going to be right back. All right, so real quick, before I get uh, too far into it, I do want to show you that I have that SFP uh, plus module at uh, Microtik plugged into port one there. I'm gonna plug the power in. I don't know how loud this is yet, but uh, we'll be right back. All right, so the switch is uh, booting. I have a power. Uh, the fan has not kicked on yet. So, um, but I also don't have a, a link light, so I'm not sure if this module is going to work or if I'm just being impatient and the switch isn't booted yet. So uh, we're going to give it a, a few more minutes and I'll be right back. And I was being um, impatient. The fans just kicked up, so it takes this thing a few minutes to boot. So we're going to give it a couple more minutes and we're going to see if we've got a link and see if we can get into it. We'll be right back. Okay, I don't know if you can see it or not, but we do have a link light here. Now, a couple of things um, to know that is... Uh, if you have this plugged into a network with DHCP, it will go ahead and grab an IP address. If you don't have DHCP, the fallback address is 192.168.0.239. Default username is admin. Uh, password is password. So give me just a second. I'm going to set this down, and we're going to find it and uh, get logged into it. Okay, so uh, it got an IP. It got 66 dot 225 so give me just a second we'll get that pulled up and see what all the fuss is about here all right so here is the sign in screen and we're just going to go ahead and put in admin and password and it is now going to prompt us to change our password that's great uh i love that oh expect look at this so we can't do uh special characters right so um I'm just going to make it let me in. All right, here we go. Nope, don't save. All right, so this is the local web. You can see down here it is letting us know that. And uh, it's got a really nice interface for not, you know, for being local. And, you know, when you name something Cloud Switch, you kind of want people to use the cloud. But Ingenious gives you the option where you don't have to. So here we are at our dashboard. It gives us our IP address, firmware, hardware, serial number, MAC address, jumbo frames. This has voice VLAN built into it. That's nice. IGMP snooping, STP, LLDP, QoS, 
Our fan status says okay. Looks like it's got some denial of service stuff that is turned off. System uptime two minutes. All right, let's see what else we've got under the dashboard. So that well, that's the dashboard. We've got one VLAN. Here's our real time meters. So there's our CPU and our memory. Here's our statistics. So we've got L2, we've got L3 uh, statistics. We've got spanning trees, GRVP, CDP, 802.1x, our port statistics, Armon. All right. Okay, here's our MAC address table. You know how I love our MAC address tables. We've got our dynamic table, MAC aging, MAC filters, and then here's our SFP module information. It says it is not compliant, not compliant. Uh, but it does recognize it as micro tick and it is, it is working. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's take a look at what we've got under configuration. So under system settings, and I will say, uh, it's probably about 68 degrees in my office and the fans, they kicked up that one time during initial initialization and they haven't kicked, kicked back on. All right. So system information, this is also going to be included in your SNMP if you're SNMP holding. Here's our IP uh, setting. So we can come in here, set a static IP or leave it at uh, DHCP. If we've got multiple VLANs enabled, so this does do L2+, plus, we can configure those networks as well. We've got our IP version 6. And this is where we can add, um, you know, more of those uh, layer 3 IP version 4 addresses. So we're going to, we'll get to that. We'll see that here somewhere. All right, SNMP, it, this uh, looks just about like the last Ingenious Switch we, we took a, a look at, and it does support all the options that you need to work with SNMP um, to work with it securely. Here's our port settings. Uh-oh, we got mad and logged us out for some reason. Good thing we didn't uh, create a crazy password there. Here's our port settings, maybe. All right, so we can see link up, auto, 10 gigs. It's not really 10 gigs. Got our lags down here. Those are down. I think those are lags. T1, T2, T3, T4, I think. Just spoke off the, the, the cuff there. We can do port isolation. Okay. We can do mirroring. Here's our jumbo frame configuration. LLDP is enabled. CDP is disabled by default. Let's see. So uh, the LLDP, by the way, did find my Unify Switch Lite 16 port. That's what it's plugged into, and we are plugged into uh, port 5. So LLDP working out of the box. Multicast, filtering, and a triple E. All right, VLAN settings. Here's our 802.1Q. So this is where we can come in here and we can add, uh, you know, VLAN 2. And we're going to call this voice. And I do happen to have a VLAN 2 that is voice. So I'm not going to get any kind of crazy anything happening here. Um, we can edit this and we can come in here and we can make sure that it is tagged on all the ports. We can um, forbid it from a port. We can make it untagged. But by default, we're editing this tagged. And... Uh, I'm just going to leave that the way that it is. So you can see we're tagged on 1 through 12. Uh, are you sure you want to navigate? Oh, we got to apply that. Don't forget to hit apply. This is the first time I've ever been in this switch, and I really like it. Here's our VLAN table, so you can see exactly what that looks like. We've got forbidden, tagged, untagged, voice, guest, uh, GVRP, and radius. Here's our uh, PVID and ingress filter, our GVRP setup, and our voice VLAN. So it'll do auto uh, voice VLAN. It's got the OIUs in here. We could come in here and add our Grandstream OIUs. Got our spanning tree. So it, uh, let's see, R RSTP. Current mode is MSTP. Uh, let's see. So full, uh, support for spanning tree. That's fantastic. Link aggregation. I wonder if this is that group. So yeah, so, well, maybe. So there's LACP, but they're calling it trunking and there was eight of those ports, right? So we can come in here and add those members. I like that. 
Okay, layer three protocols. Here's where the rubber is going to meet the road. Let's see uh, what we've got here. So there is, does not appear to be any um, dynamic routing. So it is L2, uh, as far as routing goes, it's L2 plus. But it, when they're talking about layer three protocols, they're obviously talking about protocols that run at layer three. IGMP snooping, MLD snooping, DHCP, DHCP relay. And then here is our static route table. So um, the good news is, is if you need a uh, multicast, and you need the switch to be your multicast router, this switch supports it. That's fantastic. All right, LBD, loop back detection state is disabled. Out of the gate. Okay, quality of service. Let's see what we've got. We've got global settings. It's enabled by default and is trusting DSCP codes. So here's our uh, class of service, our DSCP mappings. Here's our bandwidth control so we can come in here. So, so this should look very familiar to you from the other ingenious switches that we've, we've looked at. So we can actually rate limit each port. We've got storm control, some advanced things happening here. Here's our access control list. And remember, if you don't understand how to do access control list, don't set your first access control list up on a switch that is physically far away from you because it's very easy to lock yourself out with an access control list. But this supports them all. Mac ACLs, IP version 4, IP for, uh, version 6, port ranges, port bindings. Here's our firmware so we can uh, uh, update that. I'll have to check after uh, I hook this up because I am going to run this in the lab. i got a few things that I'm going to plug into it, and we're going to test it for a while. You know, they sent it to me. I can't recommend this to you without actually running it. Is it a nice switch? Yeah, it's a nice switch. I was comparing it to that M4300, but this doesn't do dynamic routing, a full layer three that M4300 does, but there's also a huge price difference between that, that Netgear M4300 and this switch. I think this switch is sub $1,000. All right, so we've got our logs. Our, we've got our diagnostic tool. We've got our logs. So we can send our logs to a remote server, which I am a huge fan of. And then we've got uh, cable test, ping test, IP version 6, trace route, and connection uh, diagnostic. What does this do? Does this go out to the internet, try to connect to the interwebs? It says it's loading. The question is, how long am I going to wait? Do, 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 do. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so it went out and it, it hit uh, the SNNTP server. So it looks like that's okay. DNS2, I don't hand out to DNS um, servers. Here's our user setup. So we can do, you have admin or user, user privilege, nothing in between. You can set up multiple users. And then here's our security. So we can enable 802.1x. And we can also uh, designate that guest VLAN. And right now, all the ports are force uh, authorized. Uh, we can change the, right now you can see this is not secure. Uh, we can change it so you have to use HTTPS. There is a CLI. Oh, Telnet, we're going to disable that. Um, and you can SSH in. If you're interested in that, let me know. Port security. So if we edit this. Um, we can do on and it looks like we can do, you know, multiple Mac addresses here, but then it doesn't, I'm assuming it just goes into an error disabled mode would be my guess. I'm gonna have to try that out. It's a little light on the details, but usually that's what port security is. I see more than, you know, two Mac addresses. I error disable the port and then an admin has to go in and re-enable it. Point to our radius server here, and then here's that denial of service prevention. So some of this stuff is a little light on the details, um, and that could be because we're on local web. We may join this to the uh, ingenious cloud. But uh, I'm going to run this, and uh, in I don't know, what do you want to say? So this is January, February, March, April. So in April, we'll come back, um, and we'll do a, a follow-up after I've used it for a few months and see if I can really recommend 
this switch. Once again, Ingenious, thank you for sending this out. Um, but we are going to run it. We're going to put it through its paces and see exactly what it is capable of. If you've got any questions about this switch, let me know. And we could do something crazy. Like I could just expose this thing uh, to the internet, you know, put it in a, a DMZ so it can't, you know, and we could expose it and y'all could touch the switch if you want to. Let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in because I would totally do that to let other people hit this switch and see what they think about it. Um, and if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment, share. Let me know what you want to know about this switch down in the comments. I will leave affiliate links for what I can down below. That's one way you can support the channel. Uh, we also have a Patreon. And, of course, if you need IT consulting, you can reach out at willyhow.com and uh, click hire us or contact us. Fill that information out, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. Check out this ingenious switch. I'll let you know if I can recommend it here in the next few months. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.